Uh, in a moment, uh, Fiona's going to speak. She will be the last person. Um, there's a very obvious joke about having the last word, but that is not my joke, so you're going to have to wait for that. Um, so, Fiona. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for coming today. I can't tell you how happy it makes me to look around the room and see so many people I love so much. My friends, my family, many of you I've known my whole life. Some of you are new to me um, as part of John's family and I'm just, I can't describe how happy I am to have everyone here in one room with us today. Um, and I also wanted to say that I'm especially grateful to those of you who have traveled great distances to be here. Um, it just means the world to us that you've made the effort to come and thank you so much. So the speeches were John's idea. Um, I'm not a speech giver. The last speech I gave was in 1981. Uh, I think the Michelles remember the speech. Oh, yeah. I was about 11, and uh, this is the first one since then, so bear with me. Um, but when John said he was going to speak, I knew I had to speak. <laughs> and that I had to go after him. Um, as I described it to him, I felt a little bit like the 13th fairy in Sleeping Beauty, coming in after all the damage I've done to sort of sweep up the mess as best I could, but actually I don't really feel the need to do that after hearing John's speech. I don't think there's much to say other than thank you so much, that was beautiful. Um, so, as you know now, Alec, thank you. Um, we met online, <laughs> and studies have shown that the majority of online daters tell a fib or two, or a drastic lie about themselves <laughs> online. Some of them, you know, lower their age by a year or two, maybe their weight, they increase their height a bit, maybe their earning potential. Um, let's see, they, um, they maybe lie about their marital status, or maybe when they list their favorite books, they leave out their real favorites who are the mystery novelists out there. Um, maybe when they list their favorite activities, they include hiking, even though maybe hiking hasn't been done for over a decade. <laughs> or maybe they say they're from England, because they know that goes over really well in Canada. <laughs> when actually, they're from Port Coquitlam. <laughs> But actually, John was amazingly open from the start. Um, within a week of meeting him, he invited me to his workplace. I met some of his friends, Alejandra, Gaston, Fabi, within 10 days of meeting John, and that made a huge difference. I mean, when you embark on online dating, you don't know anything about the person, and meeting some of their close friends is the biggest vote of confidence possible for someone. And that made a really big difference that he trusted to introduce me to you people and, and that you guys loved him so much. That was a really, I mean, really influential thing. So thank you for being willing to meet me and, you know, passing on your best opinions about John. <clears throat> yes, and, and uh, some of my friends, I think John alluded to this in his speech, my friends were nervous about how fast things were going. Lindsay, Sharon, Yolanda, and Kyla all mentioned something called the 12-month rule, which I hadn't heard about before. <laughs> but apparently, according to the 12-month rule, one is not, when embarking on a new relationship, allowed to exchange large amounts of money, move in together, get married, have a baby, or get tattoos. <laughs> and I just wanted to let you know, I hope you'll all be happy to hear this, that we did none of those things in 12 months. It's true, we actually did get engaged, get pregnant, and put John's apartment on the market. But there's no plans for tattoos that I'm aware of. <laughs> um, let's see. <clears throat> So we also managed to travel quite a bit over the last year. We've traveled near and far. We've been to the interior. Where's Tim? 
It's not here. Tim loves the phrase the interior. It's very exotic sounding, he thinks. Um, I've tried to explain that it's really not <laughs> So we've been to the interior, we've been to the Vancouver Island, Quadra Island, Bowen Island, Washington State, and we've been farther afield, places you actually need an airplane to get to. We've gone to California where we've met many of John's friends. We went to New York, England twice, Ottawa, and Montreal. And it's thanks to all that traveling that we've done that we actually knew almost everybody here today. I mean, there was only a few people from John's side I didn't know, and there were only a couple from my side that he didn't know, and that's because people are important to John. He's kept in touch with an astounding number of friends in all corners of the world, and we've gone to visit a lot of them. And uh, that's another thing that I really love about him, is his loyalty and his interest in maintaining friendships. So yes, we have little David, a remarkable boy who's been extremely patient with all of our socializing over the past two weeks. We've dragged him along to all sorts of dinners and <coughs> afternoons out, and he's tolerated it all very well. And I'm so lucky to have a third child. I never thought I would. And I'm also so proud of how well my other two wonderful children, Sophie and Theo, have done with their little brother, and I'm so excited to see how they all grow up together. David is going to love his big sister and his big brother so much, and he's a very, very lucky boy to have the two of you in his life. So I just wanted to close with some thank yous. I wanted to thank Sophie and Theo and Jemima for taking part in our wedding ceremony today. I wanted to thank Michelle for reading that poem and Paul for the blessing. It was lovely. I want to thank Anya and Clara and Maya Dawson who are our ushers today. If anyone helped you to your seat, it was likely one of these three. I want to thank Marcus. Where's Marcus? Marcus, for that amazing cake, thank you so much. And uh, he made it with his own hands. And Paul and Caroline, who transported it here today, thank you. Brian Lamb, for doing our video recording. For photography, we didn't hire a photographer because we thought we'd spend all our money on my false eyelashes, false nails, and toes today. <laughs> So we have some friends to thank for taking photos. I mean, I know a lot of you have been at it with cameras, and I'm hoping to see the collected works of all of this. But in particular, I wanted to thank Renee, Ian, who had to leave early, Marcus again, cake and film, and Ben was taking pictures as well. So thank you guys very much for that. Speeches, thanks, Dad. Very much, it was hilarious. I knew it would be when I asked you. Um, Phil, loved it. Yolanda, thank you very much for doing that for me, that was beautiful. Alec, thank you very much as well. And I also have to thank Fabi, who's wearing the red fascinator over here, <laughs> for taking me under her wing when I was unable to find a dress. It was a miserable pro like process for me, shopping by myself in the mall. But Fabi knows all sorts of places that aren't in malls. <laughs> places where you have to ring a secret doorbell to be allowed into. Places that don't have more than 12 dresses on a rack. And it was thanks to Fabi that I managed to find something that uh, I was happy with. And that made everything, made me feel completely differently about today. Thanks to my mom, Wendy, for all her help and support over the last few weeks. Thanks to Ben for being our MC, and thanks to John, especially, for doing so much work to make this a success. I mean, John is the person responsible for all of these pre-wedding and post-wedding, there's more to come, celebrations, and he's done an incredible amount of work. He even stepped in to help me with the place cards today when I kind of broke down about cutting them in a straight line. <laughs> Thank 
And yeah, just thanks for everything, John, and uh, and for the blog and just everything to generate excitement and help create a festive atmosphere about this whole thing. You had a lot to do with the way I feel about it today and, and having everybody here. So thank you and thanks everyone and thanks again for coming. Super, well, we're nearly done. I still haven't told a joke. <laughs> but something more important first. I wonder if we could all stand, grab a glass, while I raise a toast. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I'll get my coat. Okay. That was the joke. <laughs> ah, I forgot to touch my nose. Um, so anyhow, it's been great and um, it will continue to be later today at Burnaby at uh, half past six. Um, uh, we've got to be out of here by four o'clock, just so you know. Um, so um, here's to the happy couple. Cheers. And that's it. <laughs>